Yes. And I will repeat again that this event is recorded. So if you don't want your face to appear on the video, please switch your camera off. And another thing to consider is that uh, this, is, uh, a, this is an event where we talk, where we discuss things, where we brainstorm on something. So don't be shy and talk. And if you want to talk, you can uh, raise your hand. You can see near the... Um, emotions icons, there is this tiny hand, or since we are not a huge group of people, you can just unmute yourself and uh, talk, it's, it's okay. But don't forget that we are limited in time, so don't use the full hour to talk because uh, we are uh, nine or maybe it will be 10 people and uh, we want that everyone gets a chance to talk. Hi, Masha. And... Uh, <laughs> uh, and to the whom this event is for it's for you if you work in learning and development if you design courses online offline blended whatever if you facilitate learning sessions if you want to design your own course or if you're just interested uh, about this topic or just want to have uh, some fun with lnd folks uh, during this time of your working day. Um, and um, what do we want to get out of this? Of course, we brainstorm some uh, challenges and we discuss some solutions, but we cannot find solutions to all the challenges. So we would like to use this hour to have some networking, to exchange ideas, to brainstorm, to inspire each other. And uh, the most important part is to have fun. Um, and um, now we are going to have fun. Uh, <laughs> please open this link. You can see also in your in the Zoom chat, and uh, we will use this link to um, have a small round of introduction. Uh, I will also open this um, uh, here. Yeah, please, uh, you can see two examples, uh, my and Anya's, and you can uh, create uh, these stickers and uh, introduce yourself. Just tell whatever you feel you want to tell about yourself. Uh, maybe your name and uh, what you do, what drives you. And if you want to stay connected, also link to your uh, LinkedIn uh, page. Is it... Uh, please share the link in the chat or maybe go back to the QR ah, yes yeah I, I thought I I shared it but I will do it again yeah I just shared it um, in the chat let me know if uh, you can open it aha uh -huh, yeah I see already a lot of uh, anonymous <laughs> animals <in there. laughs> so yeah uh, and um while you are um, introducing yourself, I will introduce myself. And uh, uh, for this, I will continue my presentation. Uh, and um, so who am I? I am Olga and uh, I am software engineer by passion and profession. And I'm also somehow engaged with e-learning. I am a co-founder of Educational Studio in Ukraine, and I am also running an uh, edtech startup in Berlin, which is called Workademy. At Workademy, we build learning management system for growing companies. And uh, please, here is uh, our LinkedIn page where you can follow us. Please do that because we share news on this kind of events and other interesting things. And now I will go back to our jump board and see uh, uh, what uh, people are telling about themselves. Yeah, so uh, Nadia, nice to meet you. Uh, Elizaveta, Lisa, also instructional designer from Ukraine. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you here. <laughs> no. I already met Lisa. Nice but... to hear you, Ola, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, yeah, you can continue writing about yourself and I will continue telling about what are we going to do today. So I will jump back to my presentation 
and uh, and um, yeah wow finally we got to the topic of <laughs> today's our today's event so today we are going to talk about uh, backward design so when we design learning programs turns out that somehow we should uh, have somewhere to start with and this somewhere or somewhat uh, should to be should be goals it's like everything in our life whatever we do we if we do it without any goal in mind it will be strange to just do it uh, of course we can but uh, then what would be the purpose of what we do so it turns out in uh, e-learning or learning design it's very similar and if we start with goals in mind and then proceed to some specific uh, to, to, through and then go through some specific steps turns out it can be really powerful thing to design our learning programs and um, i have uh, i'm not alone on this stage today with me i have today anya leshenko and she is an experienced instructional designer and she will introduce this topic and we will be able to all discuss it so anya the stage is yours please you can uh, start Sure. Thank you for having me, Olga, and thank you everyone for joining. I didn't expect that many people, to be honest, but I'm very happy that this topic is interesting for so many people and that you are so supportive. Um, so introducing backward design, as Olga already said, that backward design is all about starting with the end in mind, starting with the goals. So what I wanted to say at the beginning is that backward design is not an instructional approach uh, or it's not a pedagogical approach or a tool. It's not like project based learning, for example, or problem based learning. It's not about how do you teach. It's actually about how do you plan a training or a lesson or a curriculum. So it's an approach to planning and prioritization of learning. And then after you've planned it, then comes in, uh, uh, then all the pedagogical approaches come in. And uh, starting with the end in mind and having this planned uh, approach uh, helps to avoid two common pitfalls of uh, instructional design. One of them is coverage oriented planning when we start thinking, OK, what topics should we cover or how do we cover as much as possible? And especially subject matter experts are often prone to this pitfall that they want to cover as much as possible, uh, even if some uh, points or topics don't have uh, are not very relevant for the learner. On the other hand, there is another pitfall that we start planning with activities and we want to make it as fun and as engaging as possible, which is very important for learning. But if we only start with activities and that's our main goal kind of, we can get lost in activities that are not meaningful and that not, do not lead learners to a specific goal. So starting with the goal does not cancel covering important topics uh, or having meaningful activities. It just, just helps to prioritize uh, and select activities and topics that will bring learners to the goals that we want them to achieve. Uh, I will introduce you to the three steps of backward design and then go a little bit into detail of each step. And then we will have an exercise where each of you will design your own training using these three steps. So in general, the three steps are one, starting with the goals. So you think what will learners be able to do after training? After you've decided this, there is step two, which is what evidence will prove that learners are able to do what you planned for them. So this is planning evidence and assessments. And then there is step three, where you decide, okay, what information do I need to cover and what activities should I give to the learners so that they are able to, one, complete the assessment that I planned in the uh, step two, and two, achieve the goal that I planned for them in step one. Um, so let's go to the step one, or maybe there are any questions at this point. 
I just wanted to comment that uh, I feel since we are attaching this backward design to corporate learning, I feel that this topic is extremely important because a lot of times uh, we saw in the startups and companies that there were some trainings where yeah, subject matter experts put all the information they knew, and then the new hires would go through all of it, but uh, without knowing what is it for. And uh, they spent so much time, uh, subject matter experts designing this, no, no, building, creating this thing, and then new hires going through this thing. And in the end, uh, they probably would use their work like tiny bit of this, and the time is already lost. So uh, this is why I feel that for corporate learning, it, uh, it, it's very good to, to use this thing. Maybe someone wants to comment or ask any questions before we proceed to further. Oh, okay, so let's proceed to the first uh, step. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure, and I will also give a little bit of context with an example, and then maybe there will be more questions or just examples from your life that you would like to share. Uh, so step one is setting learning goals. Where do we want, what do we want learners to achieve? And for learning goals, there are a couple of best practices. First of all, using a certain taxonomy to define a learning goal. So using certain verbs that would help you to define what is it exactly that you want learners to achieve. Do you want them to remember something or to apply something or to analyze something or to create something? Uh, and here on the slide, you can see Bloom's taxonomy. It's not the only taxonomy of learning goals. It's, it is the most popular one, but it is not the only one. And yeah, everyone is free to use the taxonomy that they prefer. Uh, then uh, after using the taxonomy, there is kind of a checklist that you can use to uh, check that your goal is um, instructionally sound, I would say. So first of all, it should be actionable, something that learner can act upon. For example, as I've also put an example here uh, at the bottom of the slide, learners should be able to design an outline of a training. So designing an outline of a training is an action that the learner takes. So this is an actionable, actionable goal. It should also be relevant. Uh, so I hope that today for all of you, this goal that is here on the slide is relevant because you are involved in learning uh, or maybe you would like to design a training. Uh, so we should not be, for example, teaching how to set learning goals to, I don't know, football players. If they're not planning to have their own coaching course, then it would be also uh, relevant for them. And uh, third important point is that the goal should be measurable. And that kind of ties it with the taxonomy. So if you say that you want learners to remember something, the three key steps of backward design, then you can also measure whether they remember the three key steps of learning design by giving them a quiz where they have to name all the three steps, for example. Uh, in our case, for this uh, event, we have a goal, which is to design an outline of the training using backward design approach. So here, the measure would be whether you use the backward design approach or not. If it were a more extensive training in a corporate setting, then of course, there would also be criteria whether you use an instructional design approach or not. But since we just have an hour and it's a fun event, uh, we will keep it simple. Uh, so that's it for step one, setting learning goals. Um, I would like to ask our participants who is uh, familiar with Bloom's taxonomy, uh, please raise your hand or just tell something or write uh, something. Uh huh. Okay, so we have at least one person. Uh -huh. uh, uh, Sasha, uh, Alexandra raised uh, her hand first. Is it raising hand or is it saying yes? Oh, well, it's both actually. <laughs> so, uh, I guess everyone is somehow familiar, but it makes sense if you explain a couple of basic like, moments which are directly connected with our today's topic here. Yeah? So not like theory, but uh, why do we need it? Why you haven't included it in the training? Like what should we know what you meant by this? Uh, you mean the Bloom's taxonomy? Yeah, sure. What I meant here, and in general, the concept of Bloom's taxonomy is that learners uh, can understand uh, material, information, or anything, anything else 
on different levels. And the idea of Bloom's taxonomy is to kind of outline these levels from the level of just remembering things. For example, in English, learners can remember words, but whether they can understand speech, for example, that's a different thing, or whether they can analyze uh, or apply, actually apply is a good, uh, is a more complicated level, whether they can apply these words and the grammatical structures that they remember, whether they can put them into structures and apply in speech, that's already a higher level. So the idea of Bloom's taxonomy is that there are different levels of knowledge, so to say, or of skills, and uh, it just helps to make them more granular uh, and then if you can make them more granular, then you can also design assessments that would assess a specific level and not just something in theory. Oh, thank you. Thank you for a great explanation. Okay, thank you. So I, I think that uh, even for those who are not really familiar with Bloom's taxonomy, once we start uh, uh, playing with the uh, Jamboard is the interactive board where we'll, we will uh, design the structure of our training based on this uh, approach, or uh, it will get more clear, right, uh, Anya? Um, I we, hope so. Yeah, we hope so. Okay, then I have, um, a question just on this on this step one, and um, yeah. And anyone can share their, their thoughts whether um, it's useful to actually share these learning goals with the learners. Um, does anyone have any thoughts on that? Well, I can respond to that. Like from my experience, we uh, tried to share as much of that information as possible because that kind of uh, gives the guidelines and understanding to the learners. Well, since I have always worked with the adult learners, that kind of gives them a relative level of autonomy and understanding as to where they're going so so that they don't feel like <clears throat> you know they're in this uh, fog and there's somebody leading them towards unknown uh, but really understand the usefulness and whatever what, what is it that they will be able to do having completed the training yeah uh, i agree also natalie uh, uh, wanted to say something um, yes, yes, I would also totally agree, especially when working with clients and preparing trainings for them. I think it is super important to share those objectives up front um, because it's an important part of the expectation management. And if you discuss this up front and say this is what your learners will know after the training and will be able to do, um, then it is much easier to talk about expectations and, and to avoid any misunderstandings for the training content. Yeah, yeah, I also agree. Yeah. Katrina, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, I think I'm always in kind of two minds because I think it does help um, also to, to kind of have a check in at the beginning to check whether the learners are really the right target group. Um, but sometimes I think, for example, if you ha if you have like two day workshop and you have a lot of learning goals, then it, maybe it's a bit overwhelming um, mm. for the learners to, to think, okay, I'm supposed to do all of these things now. Um, how can I manage that? So I always have this. Um, well, maybe this uh, is the question of uh, presenting those goals, or maybe there is uh, some other way that that could be done, like clustering them or, I know, mm -hmm. prioritizing them for the learner. So this is just a <laughs> whole other idea, I guess. Yeah, or another option could be sharing the high level goals. So not all the goals that are there for the workshop, but just the key high level goals. Yeah, thanks. Okay, uh, okay. so let's move on to the step two, develop assessment, Anya. Yeah, developing assessments or just thinking what evidence do you need to know that learners achieve their goals. Um, I think everyone here is uh, familiar with what an assessment is. Any quiz, any task that you give the learner and then you check it and you know whether they kind of achieve the goal or not. Uh, with the assessments, there are a couple of good practices. First of all, for backward design, they should be close to authentic tasks. So the tasks that learners will do in their real life. For this workshop, the task is to outline, uh, to create an outline of a training, which 
I guess uh, you all are doing in the real life. So it's close. It is not the real life task, but it is close to what you would do in the real life. Uh, and authentic tasks are usually relevant for the learners or they should be relevant for the learners. And that also has an element of motivation in it, this relevance. Uh, the second best practice is to have criteria of success. So not just giving learners a task and asking them to complete it, but actually communicating how would success look like, what they should keep in mind when they are completing this task, or how could they maybe self-assess whether the task was completed successfully. This would be the two good practices for developing assessments. Okay, um, and um, yeah, I, I see this uh, authentic task close to real life. Uh, can we uh, can we develop uh, more uh, automatic things like multiple or single choice that are close to real life? I'm asking this because I am a developer of a learning management system, and sometimes doing something really close to real life is difficult with uh, uh, technology. Uh, so. Uh, can it be automated somehow or uh, how, how can it be done? I think it can be automated to an extent. So mm -hmm. not everything can be automated, of course, but having certain scenarios or case studies helps to go uh, to the higher levels of Bloom's taxonomy, for example, to applying and analyzing. And on the level of creation, then it gets difficult, then maybe it's better to have a live session or to have an open-ended question where you would have someone from the platform to grade okay. uh, your question. And if there is someone on your platform who is grading the questions, then creating is also an option. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So as, as, as I understand right, for different levels of taxonomy, uh, some questions are more um, adequate than other like types of questions or activities. Okay, good. Uh, does anyone has uh, have any questions or comments or I don't know uh, ideas? Okay, then uh, I, I think they will happen when we start uh, doing our practical task. And uh, let's move to the third step. Yeah, the third step is after you have goals and you already know how you're going to assess whether these goals. Will be achieved now you can start defining what is it that you need to cover to, in order for learners to be able to complete your assessments and here i think this step really helps especially if you work with the clients and subject matter experts uh, you kind of ask okay what are the big ideas that learners need to know to complete my assessment and then what is it important for them also to know and be able to do maybe a bit more detailed things not the big ideas that will help them to complete the assessment and then what are the nice to knows? For example, the big idea for today was that you start with the goals and not with the information that you want to cover. The important things to know and do were these three steps that we've just went through. And the nice to know, there are a lot of them. I did not really include them in this event because it's short, but uh, you can go into different levels of understanding that are uh, defined by the inventors of backward design or into different kinds of assessments. So these are nice to know things. You can design a training without them, especially if, if your uh, budget or time or capacity are limited on one hand. And on the other hand, you can also use this uh, kind of big ideas, important to know and nice to know, to work with the experts to define what is it that you actually want to cover in the training and what things do experts think that are very important, but these things don't really help learners to achieve the goals that you've already defined. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, how do you how do you define? Um, this is the question to to the participants. When you design your trainings, uh, do do you use are do you use to identify these uh, three kinds of uh, content or how do you do that? Uh, Very useful while working with the subject matter experts. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then I think that uh, now we can proceed to, to the creation part. And uh, now uh, uh, we will move to Jamboard. And um, oh, thank you everyone for introducing yourselves. 
very nice meeting you all. Wow. Uh, and uh, uh, now uh, what, what is going on in this uh, board? So we have here um, a, an example of um, three steps that Anya prepared. Uh, and you can check it. Uh, the, so we first start with learning goals, then move to the evidence and then to the content and activities. And there are uh, uh, 10 uh, empty uh, pages. So please uh, choose your page and uh, put an, a name here and uh, everyone will know that this is your page and then uh, we will start working. Anya, I guess that it will be like time box activity. So you will announce uh, for each step, you will announce like uh, timer uh, uh, is started and uh, um, we will start uh, working. Uh, is that right? Or maybe uh, <laughs> you want to explain better this activity? that no no you've explained everything very well i was just thinking does it make sense to have a time box per, for each step or the time box for the whole activity uh or more of a holistic view of how to design training mm. um because for the whole activity, I think it would take up to 15 minutes and then we could discuss, or we could also discuss along the way during these 15 minutes if something is not clear. Yeah, I think that uh, let's try to time box uh, every activity, every step. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, please, um, while you're doing this, if you have any questions, just unmute yourself and let's discuss because this is what we are here for, to discuss things, to brainstorm about things. And uh, uh, we are not here to spend 15 minutes in silence and, uh, <laughs> and being on our own. Uh, so- can, can you please recap one more time as to what exactly uh, the task is? Yeah, the task is to think about the training, uh, any training that you would like to design. It can be a training on baking, can be a training on the learning, can be a training, I don't know, on software developing. So any training that you have in mind right now, and then try to plan it using the three steps of backward design. Yeah, and there is an example filled out uh, already in the Jamboard. The only thing that I also wanted to mention is that, yes, we have these three steps. Uh, that are more or less linear, but it often happens that when you've already defined goals and you go into evidence, you might notice that you need to adjust the goals. And then when you go into the content activities, you see that you need to adjust the evidence a little bit, and that's totally fine. So it is a linear process, but there are also kind of iterations and it is quite flexible. Okay. I will, um, yeah, and there is also, Anya put a link to Bloom's taxonomy that you can open and check uh, to um, use the verbs to identify your learning goals and uh, it doesn't open. Uh, Anya, can you check please the- Yeah, yeah, I will double check. So the idea is that we um, kind of come up with our own training topic, right? Yes, exactly. That you come up with a training topic and then you use the three steps to outline the training on a very high level. Mm. Cool. Okay. Oh, it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, then uh, it's uh, 12.30, at least here where I am, uh, something 30 <laughs> uh, at your place. And uh, well, let's start with the first uh, step, identifying learning goals. And please, if you are stuck or if you need any help, uh, just, just talk, unmute yourself and talk.
Doble. And uh, five minutes for first step are uh, gone. And um, uh, is everyone, was everyone able to write down the learning goals? Does anyone need help? How, how are you? Um, sorry, guys, I just need uh, maybe one or two more minutes to, to finish. And okay. so if it's possible, it will be perfect. <laughs> okay, one minute. <laughs> Yeah, very strict. <laughs> Only one minute. <laughs> Thank you. It will be helpful for me. <laughs> and how is everyone else? Do we need any help? Are you stuck? Actually, we can we can go quickly um, through. Mm -hmm. I love this. <laughs> uh -huh, okay. Okay, so I see that uh, that uh, people are doing good. And, yeah. Okay. So I, I think that um, uh, that we can start uh, with the second step. If you haven't yet, the, with the evidence, how would you check that the learning goals have been achieved? And uh, yeah, we uh, we will have more like uh, four minutes maybe for this because it it is becoming easier once you have identified the goals. Uh, it's easier to. Mm, to understand how how will you check this how you will check this okay
Okay, I, I see that uh, uh, pretty much everyone is, wait, not, uh, uh -huh. I didn't see Lisa. I'm on the uh, second page. Here, yes, it's me. Ah, ah, ah okay. Uh, okay, so uh, I, as I, as far as I understand, everyone is done with the um, evidence uh, uh, creation. Uh, so uh, if, if you need help, let us know. If not, uh, let's proceed to the content and activities and let's have like maybe three minutes, <laughs> I'm cutting that down, uh, three more minutes to identify content and activities for, um, um, for the learning goals. And then we can, uh, we can uh, slowly wrap it up and uh, go through <clears throat> all the things. And maybe Anya, you can like shortly comment on the, on the activities if, if, if it's possible. Yeah, if anyone volunteers <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to have their activities commented on. <laughs> okay, okay, so let's give it more uh, three minutes and then um, and then we can we can go. And once you are completely done, uh, write some plus in the chat or uh, put some emoji. Uh, yay. Zlata, if you end up uh, creating that uh, training, can you please then pass for my husband as well? <laughs> okay, <laughs> will do. <laughs> yeah, because Zlata is creating um, a training for her husband to be able to give her a proper massage. So I think it can be relevant for <laughs> pretty much a lot yes, of this untapped market of husband massages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, while we're waiting, and if you want to comment on my slide, I'll, I'm totally good with that. First of all, I love it. I think it's very relatable. <laughs> uh, and second, yeah, I think that it's really cool that you already also defined the target audience for whom you're doing, so the target audience is included in the goals. Uh, and the evidence happy wife happy life is also just a uh, genius uh, very authentic uh, I had a question about content and activities so there is an activity receive a massage from you but where is the activity to give you a massage uh, I think I just um, yeah yeah I had it in mind however um, uh, the um, there could have been more learning goals and giving the massage would just correspond would be an activity corresponding to a different learning goal so in order not to go into like all the learning goals there is possible but that definitely would be an iterative process of giving several massages receiving feedback <laughs> and then going on the next <laughs> round <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
It sounds like a great concept. <laughs> yeah. Does uh, does anyone else feels uh, feel like uh, they are done and uh, maybe wants to have some comments on on their structure or oh uh, Sasha can we can we uh, go to your um, training Do... yeah yeah <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Uh, oh, I see that also Gina wrote that I feel free to attack, but I don't want to attack anyone. I am actually curious <laughs> what impressions do you have from working through this process because it's not very intuitive sometimes. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. I liked it very much. Cool idea. Yeah, Anya, uh, feel free to go through Alexandra's uh, training and. Um, uh, what, what what can you say about it? Yeah, I think on a high level it makes absolute sense, and I would actually love to take a top to take a training on the topic of uh, giving feedback and having key criteria for a good feedback. Something that's really relevant for all of us. Yeah, especially for me, subjective opinion matters because very often people just tick something, some boxes, but they are very much afraid of giving feedback like I felt stupid or I wanted to kill myself. I was like <laughs> uh, absolutely in the wrong place. So whatever, which is subjective, but it's real. It should be included somehow, should be taken into account, but very few people know how to do it correctly. Yeah, that's true. And since we are on this topic, uh, what can you tell, uh, uh, Sasha, what can you tell about this, our um, uh, event today? How did you feel uh, today? Did you feel in the right place? Uh, was Absolutely. It... Yeah, great place to be, yes. <laughs> nice. And what about uh, everyone else? Uh, how, how do you feel about, uh, about this? event uh, do you feel that it was good for you or maybe you felt a little bit uncomfortable you can tell anything Zlata you raised your hand yeah uh, well I uh, loved it very much especially I like and appreciate the part where we actually had to go through um, the scheme and create something by ourselves I think this is a crucial part of learning and I appreciate Anna, you doing this to us. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so great group, great facilitation. Um, feel very comfortable. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone has anything more, less positive to say? Uh, it's okay. <laughs> Uh, so, so maybe I can say about uh, some <laughs> some thoughts about this activity. So, uh, as I say, uh, um, I do this um, type of work. I mean, creating um, uh, learning goals like every day in my work, <laughs> and for me, it's like a, a, it's like a brain activity and a brainstorming ev every day in brainstorming. I guess, uh, as I say, because it's every. Um, when you're working with um, different topics, different formats of uh, courses, online courses, especially, it's uh, a new type of um, brain activity. So it's a great um, practice for your brain and for your um, maybe um, um, learning process to create something new and uh, to um, uh, to thinking about some some new process, some new topics at, at this type of uh, activity. And again, thank you for uh, giving this uh, again for me because <laughs> I, I try to to do my best with with like learning goals in my uh, in my work. And and here I try to do it again. And it's a very interesting and very um, specific type of work for maybe someone. So thank you, thank you for this type of uh, activity. Thank you, thank you so much for your feedback, Lisa. Maybe I can um, jump in with a suggestion because mm -hmm. um, yeah, I really liked that we had the input about um, backwards learning um, design and then we were able to try it out ourselves. But um, I also think it's cool that we could pick the topic for our training because then we can make it relevant 
Um, I just wondered if it would have been nice to have a bit more interaction. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we could have had some like breakout rooms with a couple of people working on one um, training idea together to get the perspective a little uh -huh. bit more of others while we were working on it, like throughout the process. Yeah, uh, I love that. Uh, I also felt that uh, well, while we were um, designing the, these three steps, it was a little bit quiet. And uh, actually, I didn't know how to what to do because uh, people were busy. But then uh, I wanted to interact somehow. And, and it was, uh, yeah, I, I believe that breakout rooms and working together on something could be really helpful in this thing. Thank you so much, Katrina, for this suggestion. And um, uh, uh, yeah, I, uh, I have to tell that for people who didn't have a chance to have their um, activity to be commented on, will still have it because uh, after the event, I will send to all of you a um, link to um, the, let's call it course where you will be able to upload this activity as uh, an answer to a question. And then uh, Anya and I will check it and uh, give you some feedback and you will get a certificate. And uh, <laughs> I know that uh, it doesn't, maybe it doesn't sound as exciting as, as I'm talking about it, but I'm really excited because it's our very first uh, session on LND Happy Space where we will issue certificates to the participants. And we put some work and we designed really nice certificates. So uh, it, uh, it, it will be great. You will see. So maybe in, in one hour during, uh, in one or two hours after this event, you will receive an email with the link to this course where you will be able to upload this activity and uh, get a certificate afterwards. And um, with that in mind, uh, we, we are almost, uh, we have uh, five minutes left for, uh, for the end. I would like to ask you one question. Um, feel free to, write down or just unmute yourself as we do it, where today was it anything like super new for you that you learned today uh, or everything was like more or less that you already knew and if uh, there was something very new what was it for you Zlata? Yeah, uh, thanks. Well, um, I was familiar uh, with this approach before uh, and with the taxonomies mentioned. However, I still find it extremely useful to have it brought to my attention once again, because uh, now I'm working on projects L&D related and non L&D related, where in, you know, just remembering about this approach would be very much useful. So that's definitely on point for me. Like uh, old but gold, right? <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> I think um, for me, I could comment um, and just say that this idea of like having the big ideas, then um, the information, and then the this need to know was really useful um, because sometimes we get caught up in this, uh, sorry, nice to know. We get caught up in this nice to know area and don't actually focus on what information, especially in a short session like this, one hour. What information really needs to come across so that was um great input thank you thank you thank you katrina <laughs> i think what was new for me is um i also knew the approach starting with the objectives i think that's that's what i do a lot but then directly not going to the content but going to the evidence and just first of all thinking about okay how can i prove it at the end of my training and then going to the content um, that was something new for me and what which I liked. Cool. Thanks. Ah, there are some useful resources here. We will send the presentation to you so you will be able to go through it uh, calmly and uh, copy the resources. And usually we wrap up our sessions with um, telling some 
offers or whatever we do. Uh, and um, at Work Academy, we have this uh, uh, forever green campaign now that uh, if you are looking for a learning management system and if you find that Work Academy is a fit for you, uh, what you pay for subscription, we use 50% of it to help uh, Ukraine. Um, and uh, uh, this is uh, from Anya's company. Anya, maybe you can uh, explain a little bit uh, what, what is it? Anya works for the company called University for Industry and... Uh, and this company designs blended learning training for other companies uh, on the topics of digital transformation. So things like digital twin, uh, in the internet of things, 5G, so all those uh, technology related topics. It's what we are working on with the companies. Cool. So if you need help in uh, this dig di digital topics uh, to create this blended learnings in this regard, you can talk to Anya or to uh, her company. And uh, here we have our contacts. Then uh, talk to us, uh, add us on LinkedIn and let's stay connected and let's stay in touch. And I guess that's uh, super in time. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, if you wanna add something, you we still have one minute. If not, uh, feel free to uh, say goodbye and uh, leave this session. And I'm super grateful for your participation and for you to be here and to making this day uh, more fun than uh, it was before. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for thank joining. You. It was a Thanks great so collaborative much. activity. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.